Hey folks, uh, Sunday night back in Chicago. This is a wonderful little apartment. It's pretty sparse, so I'm not going to get the biggest marks, greatest numbers on Room Raider, but it is what it is. Long week, but an exciting week. Um, you know, left Chicago from the Institute of Politics to um, visit with my buddy Mike Bennett in Colorado. Had a couple of wonderful days out there with him. Um, he is his campaign is really, 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 really rocking. Um, and then spent the weekend in New Hampshire, first time in the Granite State, and it was just awesome. Maggie Hassan is such a great candidate out there, and she had such enthusiastic uh, folks. Uh, been a lot of fun back in Chicago for the Institute now. Um, so let's talk a little bit, because the other thing that I keep reading, you know, when I go to these places, and I'm, I'm like, I feel like the Johnny Cash song, I've been everywhere right now, um, and still places to go, uh, headed out uh, this week. But the fact of the matter is, everywhere I'm going, I am seeing a lot of enthusiasm for our candidates. People are canvassing, people are getting out there, they're talking about these races. But when you, when you read the things in the, in the polls and you read all of this stuff, it's like Democrats are once again, seem to be getting into that woe is me mode that we're in back in May. Uh, then I talked about, I talked about with you guys. I talked about wherever I went. This woe is me. What are we going to do? We're facing the headwinds again. Oh my God. Oh my God. Well, the fact of the matter is folks, we, we have got the candidates. This shouldn't be this close. And I recognize it is close because there's a lot of factors involved, but the fact is we have got the candidates to really make a difference in going forward in the, in this, in this country. Um, and some of them are incumbents. Some of them are running for open seats. Some of them are challenging folks. Uh, and this, this election is coming down now to some real serious contrast between candidates. Not since the Republican Party put up a bunch of Tea Partiers 10 or 12 years ago, have we seen the kind of extremist candidates that we're seeing across the board, election deniers, um, folks who want to get rid of Social Security, Folks who, you know, will d deny the existence of just about anything good and want to complain about everything that Democrats do. It's really stunning if you go through what's happening out there. This, this election, more than any that I can remember, is truly about the contrast. You've, you've got a choice, a, a lot of choices. I mean, choice is on the ballot. Make no mistake, folks. Choice is on the ballot. You know what? talking about after the Dobbs decision and choices. You've got choices to make. And we've got to make sure that we keep our foot on the gas up until the midterms. You know, if depending on how these elections go, this is going to be the first step in one of two things. Let's be candid. It's going to be the first step in one of two things. It's either going to be the first step in codifying Roe versus Wade and overturning the Dobbs decision and taking it from the Supreme Court. It's going to be the first step that way. Or if we're not careful and we don't and, and we're not pushing toward the end, it'll be the first step to a national ban such as uh, Lindsey Graham has introduced. There's a number, a, a couple of bills, I think, that have been introduced. A national ban on abortion. All of these states' writers have now decided, well, maybe we should we should have a national ban. It's going to be the first step. That's the, that's the issue of choice that's on the ballot. But there's so much more. It's also going to be the first step on whether or not we're going to protect elections and, election, and true election integrity, or whether we're going to move another step to election deniers, where a whole group of candidates from top to bottom are going to be t looking at, well, maybe I am not going to accept these results uh, if they did turn out the way that I want them to. Across the board, Candidates are constantly saying they're not going to accept the results of an election, just like our former president did uh, in 2020. This is the contrast we got, and it's up and down the ballot. Now, I have been focusing on the Senate races. I mean, obviously, that has been my law for a long time, and I've got colleagues running, so I've been focused on the Senate races. And let me tell you, we've got some great incumbents that we've got to reelect. We've got to reelect Raphael Warnock, who's right now debating an empty, um, uh, an empty podium. 
if, if, well, uh, he actually, when Herschel Walker showed up the other day, it was an empty podium probably as well, but it's truly an empty podium tonight because Walker refused to show up for the debate that's going on. Warnock is an amazing guy. You've got Mark Kelly uh, in Arizona that we've got to get reelected. You've got my friend Catherine Cortez Masto in Nevada. Very tough race, but a wonderful ticket that you've got with Governor Sislak and Attorney General Ford. Um, strong, strong incumbents in, in that race that we've got to rally around because we know that that is one race that is really tight. We've got Maggie Hassan in uh, New Hampshire. Gosh, what it was beautiful in New Hampshire uh, this time of year going up there. It was my first time uh, to New Hampshire and it was just amazing. But it's amazing to be there with somebody like Maggie who cares so much about her state and works so hard. You, we've got to make sure that we uh, uh, have races like with Sherry Beasley that we can compete with in North Carolina. Sherry is really surging. I was with Tim Ryan recently in Ohio. That's a race that's really taken off. Mandela Barnes is coming back strong. I know you've read the things about his campaign slipping a little bit, but I'm telling you, he's coming back strong in that race. You've got, and you've got other races. You've got um, uh, the, uh, Franken running against Grassley uh, in Iowa. That's a big race. And one of the ones where I went to early, Kendra Horn is really surging in Oklahoma. I'm telling you guys, that is another sleeper. We moved that to the, onto the sleeper side because polling is coming out that's pulling her closer and closer because people are realizing that Mark Wayne Mullen, with that weird name, um, just weird, is also such an extreme candidate. It's a conservative state. Yeah, everybody knows that. It's a conservative state, but guess what? Mark Wayne Mullen is an extremist, and even conservatives don't like extremists uh, in there. All those races are doable, but we cannot, we cannot, please, just focus on the Senate races. I have only got so many days uh, of the week and so many hours in the day, so I have focused in my travels on Senate races. But I'm going to tell you, right now, these governor's races, um, the attorney general's races, the secretary of state races, every one of these races down the ballot are extremely important. And in some states, You've got an opportunity to break super majorities in these states. You've got an opportunity to flip states. I was with a couple of uh, state representatives last night at dinner uh, in New Hampshire, and they are working hard on key races to make sure that they can flip that New Hampshire um, legislature. Because look, these election deniers are not just running for the Senate. They're running for governor and they're running for secretary of state. They're running for your local elections. So we cannot, we cannot get away. We cannot let the, the down ballot races slip. We've got to make sure when we're out there canvassing, calling people, we talk about our one candidate, but tell them not to forget the candidates down ballot all the way to local races and local state legislatures. This is, it's so important. You know, wherever I'm going out there, I, I'm, I'm seeing such enthusiasm for these candidates. I really am. But I'm also seeing some fear because they understand the alternatives that their candidates are facing. When you've got a candidate, for instance, I'll just pick out a race. I was just in New Hampshire, so let's pick out New Hampshire. You got a, a, a candidate like Maggie Hassan, who's a true public servant, who has done so much for the Granite State, who has worked across the aisle to help with the infrastructure bill and the and the Inflation Reduction Act, who has done surprise bill, you name it. I can go on and on about the things Maggie's done. Running against a guy, a former general, who um, is literally an election denier, has said that he doesn't know if he'll accept the election results if he loses. Uh, he has said that it's time that we get rid of Social Security. True story, folks. And, and there are bills that have been introduced that is a, just one example of the kind of contrast that we've got right now in these midterm races. That's why it's so important to get out and canvas and talk to people. Go where they are. Tell them that you understand that gas prices are hurt their pocket, but un, they understand that inflation at the grocery store is a problem. 
but make them understand or try to get them to understand that Democrats have been working on this and have a plan. There's no silver bullet, especially on inflation. That is a worldwide phenomenon, folks. It is not just Putin. It's not just supply chains. It's not just the pandemic. It's the combination of all of those. And if you look, we've actually got lower inflation than most other democratic, democratic societies in the world. So talk to them and tell them we've got a plan. And, and I guarantee you, look hard at their, all the opponents and ask folks, what's the plan of these challengers, these GOP challengers that are out there? Yeah, they're complaining a lot. We hear them complain a lot. Some of them will go on racist rants, which we've heard recently as well. I won't go into that again. You can check my Twitter feed. But ask them what their plan is uh, for reducing inflation. They don't have one. Their plans are simply to get rid of Medi uh, Medicare, simply to do the things uh, like get rid of Social Security. Those are their plans. That and it's not. It is not good for our states. It's not good for America. Uh, folks, we, we can't, we cannot let up. We have seen everything goes in cycles. And back when I, after I left the White House, we, I started getting people to, to talk about the good things that we've done. And everybody did. I'm, I'm not taking the credit for the great polls because the president and our Democratic leaders in Congress did an amazing job. And we got things done for the American people. We've, it's been an amazing run but we've still got more to work to do. And we know that the way things go, there's a dip, there's a cycle. And now we're, we're, we're on a cycle that's a little bit down. So I gotta get people, people gotta get fired up again. They gotta get excited. They gotta get ready to get to the polls. So here's the deal. Some of your states, uh, has, voting is starting, has already started and is about to start. Go, vote early. Don't take a chance on election day and, and long lines or bad weather. Go ahead and get that out of the way. Urge your friends and your family to do that. If you've got a mail-in ballot, mail the damn thing in, okay? Don't let it sit there. Like I often let stuff sit around my desk, Louise will tell you. Um, mail the thing in. Get it in. Get it done. And encourage your friends and neighbors to do that. You know, folks in Alabama, if, if you're going to be a, a vote absentee, go ahead and do it. You can go to the courthouses usually. You can request an absentee ballot. Check those times, check your registration. And, and at the very minimum, on election day, November the 8th, please get out and vote. In the meantime, talk to people, just talk. Tell them how important this election is and go where they are and talk to them about the issues that they care about. Try to get them to potentially take their tribal uniforms off and vote the way that they believe, truly believe that is the kitchen table issues that I've talked about so much in my race. Um, you know, guys, I, I'm going to tell you something. In, in 2017, Alabama, it was a special election. It was a special election, and, and that made it, made it special in a lot of ways. And we didn't have the same kind of tribalism. But people in Alabama got out to the polls, and they rejected extremism. They rejected the kind of the, the kind of politics that had nominated a, a candidate like Roy Moore. Alabama did that. And we did it because we got out and worked and we got out and, and we had passion about what we were doing and how we were going to try to represent people and for three years, knowing that three years later in a, in a Trump year, uh, the odds of me getting reelected were not going to be good. But it, that led to some momentum for 2018, which helped us take the House. It led to so many good things because people believed. We got to believe again. You cannot let the crap about the polls of what air were in the dip or the president's underwater in this or water there get you down. We, we have that hope because our democracy is depending on each one of you. So let's get out there. Let's do this. I'm excited. I'm going to be traveling again this week. I'm going to be traveling again the next week. I'm going to be traveling again right up until. Uh, election day, trying to make sure that people know the importance of these elections and how important it is the candidates that we have and the contrast to the candidates that they're running against. That's what this is all about. So please, let's get out there, take a little bit of break for the rest of the Sunday night and start first thing in the morning. Make phone calls, do the things you got to do necessary. All right, y'all take care. We'll see you again in a few days. Thanks.
Midas Touch is unapologetically pro-democracy. And look, we know you are too. So please make sure you check out our best-selling shirt and our best-selling gear, the unapologetically pro-democracy gear. And hey, while you're at it, make sure you check out my favorite shirt and one of our most famous designs. It wasn't rigged, you're just a loser. At store.midastouch.com. That's store.midastouch.com.